You don't have to face the camera. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Good morning. It's already Monday morning, August 10, August 10, 2020. And today we are celebrating Jana's birthday. Yay. <laughs> Jana's birthday today. Our daughter Jana is celebrating her 15th birthday. So, turn 15 today. August 10. Okay. So today is, is besides being Jana's birthday, it's also the feast day of St. Lawrence. Okay. <clears throat> so St. Lawrence. So it's a very interesting story of St. Lawrence. St. Lawrence was a deacon in the early church um, and he was martyred uh, around the time of uh, Emperor Valerian, the Roman Emperor. Okay? And there's an interesting story about St. Lawrence and, and um, the early church which is very relevant to the gospel we're going to comment on today. Okay, so St. Lawrence was a deacon. In those days, uh, what was the primary duty of the deacons? In particular, St. Lawrence, what was his job as a deacon in the church? The deacons were the ones in charge of the material needs of the faithful. Okay? Remember how there was a, a, a gospel uh, account where the apostles gathered and said, you know what, we have been too busy attending to the widows, to the, to the orphans, to, uh, to the poor, that we could not anymore preach the gospel. So they said, uh, we need to appoint people among the, the men in our uh, communities so that they take care of um, this kind of task, okay? to minister to the needs of uh, people so that the apostles can concentrate on preaching. And so that's what they did, and this, this is the origin of the deacons. Now, St. Lawrence was one of those deacons, and he was in charge of, um, you know, um, uh, taking care of such material needs. He, would, he was the one who would uh, uh, look for donations from, from people, and then uh, he would distribute these things to the needy, okay? to take care of the, of the needs of uh, people who had less in life. And somehow, uh, the... The uh, emperor uh, envied this kind of uh, charitable work that uh, the Catholic uh, faithful would do. And he accused the Catholic Church of being very rich with plenty of resources. Because how can you take care of, uh, of all of these poor people if you are not rich? Right? Same thing that the Catholic Church is being accused of up to now. That the Catholic Church is so rich. Anyway, so... Uh, the emperor threw uh, the, the prefect of Rome uh, at that time, uh, ordered St. Lawrence to gather all the resources of the church, the riches of the church, and hand them over to the governor. Because, uh, because he said, you know, uh, your own founder said you have to render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's. So... Um, I'm claiming all of these things. They, they all belong to Caesar. So give them to Caesar. Give them to the emperor. So uh, St. Lawrence cleverly said, okay, give me a day to gather all of these things and I'll give it to you. Okay. So the following day, uh, St. Lawrence appeared before this um, prefect and, and presented the lame, the cripple, the blind, the poor, the widows, lined them up and said to him, Here, these are the treasures of the church. And of course, the prefect got so mad at him <laughs> that he ordered him burned at the stakes. And he ordered that a big grill be, be uh, fashioned with the hottest of hottest coal put underneath it and to cook St. Lawrence on that grill. 
And that's what happened. And so, and there comes the famous story where a St. Lawrence laid on one part of his body where he said, you know what? I'm already well done here. <laughs> you can turn me over to cook the other side. Okay? And that's what they did. They turned him over and continued to uh, cook him on the other side. Okay? And that's how he died. A martyr for the church. Now, why is this story relevant? Because in today's gospel, and this gospel, of course, uh, is chosen for today's Mass because of the story of St. Lawrence, right? Today's gospel is from St. John. It comes from chapter 12, verses 24 to 26. Jesus said to his disciples, Amen, amen, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies... It remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it. And whoever hates his life in this world will preserve it for eternal life. That is the root of St. Lawrence's uh, uh, courage in giving up his life okay he was not afraid to give up his life if it had to require martyrdom because he was looking forward to eternal life because he knew that the life on earth okay, is temporary fleeting this is not what we live for this earth is not what we live for. We live for eternity. We do everything in this life with a view to our eternal life. That this life is just a journey through some portion of time that will lead us to the door of death. A door that will open up to eternal life, to life with God in heaven forever. See? As we just also read in, a, in, in another gospel a few days ago, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world but forfeit his own soul? So the story of St. Lawrence today and the gospel we're reading today is again another confirmation of how we Catholics, children of God, should look forward to heaven. And that we should not be attached to the treasures of this world. Right? We should not be attached to the pleasures of this world. We should not be attached to all the fame and glory and, 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 and uh, uh, acclaim that people give us in this world. All the adulation and the praises that we gather from people, all the achievements that we could, we could, our our handiwork and our hands have wrought, we should not be attached to these things. Because this world is passing, this world is not going to last. The real treasure that we have lies in heaven and is waiting for us in heaven. That is why St. Lawrence was so clever when he was asked, Where, give us the treasures of the church. Well, here they are, the lame, the sick, the blind, the crippled. These are the treasures of the church because it's true. The real treasures of the church are spiritual in nature. They're not material. And the same thing is true with us. Our real treasures are the graces of God in our soul. That we try to grow in order to merit eternal life. You see how beautiful this, this perspective is about life. That if this is the way we live, we're not going to be attached to ah, the riches of life. We're not going to be attached to the pleasures of life. We're not going to be attached to the good taste, the good life, the, the you know... All of these things are good, don't get me wrong, and we should try to strive for them. But we have to put it in perspective. We strive for them because these are only means. The 
They are not ends in themselves. They are only means to help us get to heaven. We have to use these material things on earth as a means to get us to heaven. Remember Genesis when our Lord said, Okay, I'm giving you the earth. Okay, uh, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth, subdue it, control it, have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, the cattle, and all the animals that crawl on the earth. The Lord God took the man, put him in the Garden of Eden to till and keep it. All of that is in Genesis, right? That's the purpose of why God created the man on earth, to make us dominate the earth, make it productive. For what? Not just to enjoy it, not just to keep everything for ourselves, but actually to turn it over to God back to God because everything has to go back to God and so what are we doing in our lives what are we doing with our work what are we doing with our studies what are we doing with our relationships all of these things are there because God wants us to sanctify this world sanctify ourselves so that we use it to go to heaven so that we use it to merit eternal life in heaven with God forever. So that's our hope. See, that's our Christian hope. To be with God in heaven. So everything in this world is passing. Everything in this world is going to be useless in the end. We're, we, we won't need them for heaven. So detachment is a very important virtue to live. Okay? Detachment. To be detached from this life. This is not the be all and end all. Of our existence. And that is why we Catholics who understand this very well, and I hope we, we get this very well, we are not afraid of dying. Okay? We are not afraid of death. Because for us, death is just a door that opens up to the glory of heaven, the glory of eternal life. Eh? And each of us will die in many different ways. Many different ways. In the same, for example, St. Lawrence died by being cooked on a grill. <laughs> Our Lord died by being crucified on the cross. Very violent deaths, right? Be other Christians have been beheaded for their faith. I mean, others die by car accidents, by sickness, by cancer, by heart attacks. I mean, there's so many ways to die. Nowadays, the more popular way to die is by the coronavirus, right? <laughs> I mean, come on, people. Why are we so afraid to die? Huh? Why are we so afraid to die? We're so afraid to die. Because we are afraid to die because we don't have faith. We cling on this earth. We cling to this life on earth too much. We love this life too much. Because we love God less. That's the only reason. <laughs> but if we have more love for God. If we really have faith. If we really have hope. In our own salvation and the promise of Jesus Christ. We should not fear death. We should welcome death. I don't mean to say we should be careless. I don't mean to say we should be imprudent. I didn't say that. Okay? Uh, precisely virtue, uh, uh, prudence and, and care are our uh, virtues, we should take care of ourselves. We should protect ourselves from diseases. We should protect ourselves from accidents. We should stay in good health. That's part of the fifth commandment, right? But it is very compatible to take care of oneself and also welcome death. Those are two very compatible things. Why? Because that's the reality of our lives, right? We're all going to die. There's no way we can escape dying. So while we, are, we, we exercise prudence and care and take care of our health, we eat well, we exercise, we do everything to take good care of our health, we should also, in faith, and as an expression of faith, welcome death. 
We should not be afraid of death. Death is the door to heaven. The only reason why we will be afraid of death is if we are not prepared to die. If we have not taken care of our own soul. If we have been away from God. If we have been leading a sinful life. If we had not been repentant for our sins. Well, then yes, maybe we have reason to fear death. But if we try to live our lives according to the will of God, try to be close to God, we try to live up to our uh, 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 prayerfulness and our life of sacrifice and piety and mortification and penance and we avail of grace through the sacraments, death should be a welcome treat for us. In whatever form it comes. Look at St. Lawrence. He was not afraid. <laughs> I'm overcooked on this side. Turn me over. <laughs> he, he had a sense of humor. To face death. Right? Because he was secure in his faith. Not presumptuous. No. It's not presumption. But he was just self-assured that. Yes. With the grace of God. Acknowledging the grace of God which was what was giving him the courage to die. He was hopeful that he was going to heaven. So he treated his own death with a sense of humor. Hey, turn me over. I'm overcooked. You know what? A lot of us are overcooked. A lot of us are already burned, not by good things, but by our attachment to material things in this world. Let's be detached. Let's get ready to die. If we have been living life in anticipation of eternal life, then we should not fear dying. We should welcome death. Faith, not fear. Eh? We should live in faith and not in fear. Okay, let's ask... Uh, St. Lawrence today to help us have the courage and have the hope and have the faith that he had to live life. Okay, my friends, that's it for us. Have a good day. Have a good week ahead of you. We hope to see you again tomorrow. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Holy Joseph says bye. Hi, Eva. Bye-bye, Eva. Bye. bye, -bye, Eva. bye. bye. <laughs>